What's up guys, Eric here. And in this video, I'm very excited to talk about RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars season eight. So they released a promo for season eight. We're not going to look at that because I will definitely get a copyright strike on YouTube. I know it hundred percent, but we are going to be taking a look at the entertainment weekly promo where they had a photo shoot and mini bios for all of the returning Queens. And I'm very excited about this. I haven't looked at these individual pictures, uh, but I'm really excited to see what they're wearing in this promo, this little tiny promotional thing there. Uh, if those are the looks, I am ready for them. I am so ready. But before we do this, this is my first time doing an actual like drag race video. A little bit about me. If you enjoy drag race content, please consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to be covering looks for all of the seasons of drag race moving forward uh, because I am a fashion fan. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I'll be doing this as well as international seasons. I may pick up Espana um, because they're only on their second episode, I believe. So I might pick up there and start reviewing looks on there as well. I am a look person. I like fashion and I like art. So although the challenges are fun and all of those things, I love the runways. That's why I watch the shows uh, because I just love to see artists like sort of express themselves, whether it be something that they had a designer make that they had input on or something they made themselves. I just love to see it and see how it's presented on the runway. Um, so I love this. Also been working with Queens for over 25 years in the drag world. Um, so I'm not new to drag at all. I have been a very much a big part of the community. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this season of drag race. So hopefully you guys will want to take the ride with me and, uh, hear my thoughts and opinions on these looks. All right. So really excited season seven on Paramount plus of all stars was a massive success for them. It was an all winter season where spoiler alert, we got to see Jinx Monsoon walk away with the crown for the whole season. And we know Jinx is going to be on Dr. Who, um, she was just in Chicago. So a lot of great things happening for her there. So a lot of eyes are on season eight of Drag Race here on uh, Paramount+. Plus. All right, so we're going to scroll down and look at the pictures, and there's a mini bio for all of the queens. So let's take a look here. So first up, we have Alexis Michelle from season nine of, uh, of Drag Race before she became on All Stars. So this to me is a very classic look. I love the way this fits. I love the shoes. I just, it looks so effortless on Alexis. Uh, this is the perfect hair, that blonde hair sitting on top with a great, great face of makeup. What you get to see with All Stars, which I think is really exciting, is the evolution of a lot of these artists' drag, like how these queens are presenting themselves over time from when they first were on the show to the point where they're in All Stars. So it's always fun to see that. I love the detailing around the bust area. I think that looks really pretty. And um, Alexis Michelle is a theater queen. Um, not sure if she loves that title or not, but we'll go with it. Theater queen who did really well on her season but was very underappreciated and um she's gonna she's gonna have some moments i'm sure but overall just enjoy this look and uh, her mini bio says curtain up light the lights new york city's alexis michelle is ready to take the stage again the singing and dancing broadway baby made it to the top five on season nine and now she's ready for encore to claim her spot in the drag race hall of fame all right cool then we have darian lake now here's the thing i've actually worked with darian more than once um, she's performed at some of the venues that I have been DJing at. And so I had the opportunity to work with her actually right directly next to her station where she was getting ready. Um, very, very, very fun queen, very funny. Um, just a ball of energy. And I tell you right now, when I say this is the best, I think I've ever seen her look. I'm just not kidding. This glow up for her is just fantastic. This dress, the material, the way the, the gloves are connected to the sleeves, the off the shoulder look, it's just absolutely beautiful. The wig, absolutely beautiful. And then she has this moment with this fabric just flowing off, uh, off the side of this dress here. And the colors are stunning. I'm loving the color uh, palette this season. I'm not sure what the, the prompt was for them on this. I didn't see it up at the top. Um, but anyway, love these colors, love Darian. And let's see what her bio says so official bio uh of darian says it's time to take another dip in the cool refreshing waters of darian lake this pretty and witty comedy queen made a big splash in season six going all the way to the top four now after a transformative weight loss journey she's ready to show the world she's the fiercest queen of all now i don't know how much of that weight loss is going to be addressed on the show but i'm assuming it will be somewhat of a topic of conversation everyone's going to have some sort of a story going into this all-star season because producers of the show love for these queens to bring in stories either something for themselves or something connected with another queen on the show so i'm sure it will be um it'll have some sort of like uh show story on the show 
Now here's Heidi in closet. Now Heidi in closet. I have seen her live so many times, never had the chance to work with her, but I've been uh, at venues where she's performed at. And I think she's absolutely hilarious. She's got a great sense of humor, but this look is stunning to me. This looks so, so good. It's got this whole like Dick Tracy sort of like uh trench coat vibe to it, which I really appreciate. I, I'm not sure what it's referencing. Sometimes Queens have references that I get immediately. And sometimes I don't get them until later on. Um, I love the boots with this. I'm not sure if I would have, I guess they're like a nude boot. Um, I, I don't know. I think maybe a shoe might have been more. I don't know. I kind of think a shoe would have looked better with this. But other, but I love it. I still think it's fantastic. It's great. The detailing in it, the hip treatments. I love the silhouette of it. I think it's great. This material looks stunning on her. It's lined. I love a lined garment. I hate when you can see through something uh, with the fabric on the back, the naked fabric, uh, where you can tell that it was just a, like one empty side and one side with a print on it. So love that about her. Let's see what her bio says here. From season 12, Heidi in Closet is a Miss Congeniality winner. Everyone really loved her. The blessed and highly favored Miss Congeniality of season 12, Heidi in Closet, is back to snatch the All-Stars crown. This former small town girl has hit the big time and is ready to prove that she's got all this soft and supple star. I can't do it like she does with the, with the little whistle. Star power to take her all the way to the Drag Race Hall of Fame. So more recent season. Season 12 isn't recent recent because we just wrapped up season 15. But what are the more recent seasons uh, compared to the first two that we talked about here? All right, this is James Mansfield, not Jane Mansfield, but James Mansfield, um, who after Drag Race has done quite a bit, season nine here, um, has done quite a bit in terms of like a sort of glow up and having social media presence. Now, if you're not familiar, James does a lot of stuff with current Drag Race queens and has since her time on Drag Race, whether it be makeup or, or hair or something along those lines, very much one of those really involved entertainers who has been a big part of the community for a while. And I'll have to say, as much as I love the color palette here, this Barbie-esque color palette on her, I think the look overall is kind of... It's just okay for me. I think it's just okay. It's a classic silhouette. The gloves, the way the top is cut, the strap. I think the most interesting thing about this is the tool on the back that goes into this long sort of train behind her. But overall, I'm just not a huge fan of this look. I think it's fine, but I do suspect we're going to see a lot more exciting things from James as the season goes on here. So as a season nine's bubbly blonde bombshell, James Mansfield is bringing classic showbiz sparkle to all stars. She's taking the internet by storm with her hilarious online beauty tutorials that caused a commotion in the bitch who stole Christmas. And now she's got her sights on the Drag Race Hall of Fame. Can't wait to see what she's going to bring. All right, next up, we have someone that I have not seen in ages, and that is Jessica Wilde. Now, Jessica Wilde is all the way back from season two of Drag Race. So this is like an OG queen, right? Uh, I have to say right away, the colors are stunning. I love this rich, rich color palette that she has going on. And it's very reminiscent of something that RuPaul herself may actually wear, the, especially the, the bodice up. Um, is very RuPaul. The gloves are very RuPaul to me. RuPaul would probably have a much bigger slit in the dress, though, because RuPaul loves to show off her legs. Uh, but she's worn stuff like this before. That's just a, it just goes all the way to the ground uh, with legs and clothes. But you can't really see shoes or anything. It doesn't matter. I think this looks absolutely stunning. I'm not a huge fan of the hair, that swoop that she has going on. But that's also very Rue as well. Rue loves a, a good hair swoop uh, moment. But otherwise, I think it's pretty fun. Let's see what her little mini bio says. From season two, it's the original golden child, Jessica Wilde, the lovable and talented Puerto Rican powerhouse is back to prove that she can sing, dance, and crack your padded ass up, baby. Things are about to get wild. Escalando. Now, one of the things that, that Jessica uh, had struggled with in the earlier seasons was the language barrier, which is something that I think... Hopefully they don't play up on too much in all stars. I think hopefully RuPaul's gotten away from that. I found it to be a little bit cringe when they tried to like sort of mess with the Queens that, that had an, uh, a language barrier. So hopefully they don't do that too much, but we'll see. Now we have Jimbo. Okay. So Jimbo is my partner's favorite queen. He absolutely loves Jimbo and we have seen Jimbo live probably like five or six times now. Um, he just loves how campy and ridiculous Jimbo is. Now, Jimbo was actually, I believe, a costume designer before he started doing drag. 
right? So I believe, and, and I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that Jimbo was. And you would have met Jimbo if you're watching Drag Race Canada or UK versus the world. Jimbo has competed in both of them. And so this look is just about everything that you could love about Jimbo. Jimbo, if anything, is pushes it over the top. Sometimes people don't appreciate it. Sometimes people hate it. Sometimes it's controversial. I'm pretty sure there's been controversy about the look that he wore into the workroom, which we're not going to be looking at here. Um, but this is fun. It's almost like an oversized poodle look with this very like sort of uh, hourglass silhouette, which is looks absolutely amazing. I think Jimbo looks beautiful here. Jimbo doesn't do beauty very often. Jimbo is a silly camp queen. Jimbo does fashion, he does camp, but very rarely does Jimbo do beauty. And this to me is very much a beauty look for Jimbo that pushes it just far enough that makes it very much in their aesthetic. Let's see what it says here in terms of the bio. Jimbo from Canada's Drag Race Season 1, RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the World, Season 1 as well. Well, I think maybe they're going to do more seasons, I don't know. Official bio says, what's big, bouncing, and make be used as a flotation device, Canada's drag clown Jimbo. By the way, Jimbo is a drag clown. That's what they refer to themselves as. So that's not really uh, anything negative. Jimbo is, there's a lot of drag artists who are drag clowns instead of drag queens. This bodacious queen is stacked with talent. And after gag-worthy uh, seasons of drag, uh, Canada Drag Race UK versus the world, she's ready to bring home the baloney and a crown. There's a skit where she throws baloney um, at, at people dressed up in this white costume. I can't remember the name of the character that, that, uh, that she created. Anyway, here we go now. Kahana. Now Kahana, I believe was, oh, it's Kahana Montrese. Okay. She never named here, but I knew it was, uh, Kahana Montrese in her season. This is a massive glow up from what Kahana was bringing back during her initial season. And Kahana has been putting in the work. Right. If you've been keeping up with her on social media and what she's been doing, she has been putting in the work and she looks absolutely stunning going for something a little bit more burlesque here, something a little bit more scantily clad because her drag does lean into that sort of soft side, uh, that edgy side that, that we see sometimes with the, the queens who love to just show off their curves and their shapes. So this is what she went for here, which is very different from what we've seen so far in this presentation from Entertainment Weekly. Um, I love the colors. I love this. It almost reminds me of like a, more of like a Brazilian cut outfit. And the hair is absolutely beautiful. I love all the like uh, additional pieces of jewelry in the hair moving into like the earrings and stuff. So looking forward to that. Let's see what it says about her here. Uh, did someone say glow up from the floor up? Here comes Kahana Montrese, the showgirl from Sin City, who's been wowing crowds at RuPaul's Drag Race Live in Las Vegas. And now she's doubling down on the ultimate jackpot, the All-Stars crown. All right, let's see. Who do we have next here? Candy Muse. This look. This is so beautiful. Now, Candy Season in particular, right? Uh, Candy Season, which, uh, by the way, was full of so many fantastic queens. Hold on, sorry. Uh, so many fantastic queens, so, ma so much fashion in her season, uh, which was uh, season 13, I believe. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure it was. I get confused a little bit. Yes, yeah, season 13. So many fantastic fashion queens. Candy was bringing looks almost the entire competition. So it does not surprise me that she has such a fun uh, oddly shaped silhouette that just is giving so much here. She's like very, like very controversial because she speaks her mind. She says what she's thinking. She doesn't hold back. I wonder how much of that is going to be translated into all stars or if she's going to step back a little bit and be a little bit more um, uh, strategic in the way she plays the game this season uh, prior to her season 13 run. This looks beautiful. This color looks so good on her complexion. I love the gloves. I love the jewelry. I love the hair and the shoes with that slight platform in them. Just absolutely fantastic. And it says here with her little bio, the official queen of Badonka Dunk Bronx is back to give you a sugar rush. After coming this close to winning the season 13 crown, this outspoken and outrageous Candy Muse is ready to remind the world that world what star quality is all about. That was an argument she had with Tamisha Iman, who was also very controversial in that season. And um, she talked about her not having star quality. It was absolutely funny. I'm curious if Candy is going to be the drama of the season. We'll have to wait and see. And then we have Lala Ree. Now, Lala Ree, if you're not familiar, has the 
unique, uh, <laughs> the unique, uh, I guess, golden boot perspective of doing a look that everybody considered to be like one of the ugliest looks, maybe the ugliest look to ever be on Drag Race with her ball bag like uh, unconventional materials look that she did uh, in post filming. I'll put it up over here on the side so you get to see it. Uh, but it was a look that a lot of people thought just sort of uh, solidified who she was as an artist. And I'm so glad that she's getting to come back because I hate that that's sort of the legacy that she had when she left the show for so many people is having that look that sort of is, is known for not being great, but look here, she looks absolutely stunning. I love this gown on her. It looks beautiful. The sheer material with all the applique on it. And then this huge, like old school drag necklace. Baby, what I tell you, this necklace, I have seen versions of this in pageants for my entire life. But this one elevates it even more. It is just massive. The bracelets, the big oversized sleeves, all of that looks really good. I love the hair, but if I had one critique, I'd want the hair to be bigger. I think a much bigger version of what she has on would actually look really cool. So we'll see uh, how she does this season. What does her little uh, bio say? By the way, she is season 13 as well. Sorry, I didn't mention that. So she's going to have some sort of camaraderie with Candy Beast because I believe they were very close uh, during that season. I haven't watched it back recently. Season 13's Fierce fan favorite is back to bag a spot in the bag bag a spot in the drag race hall of fame can this former miss congeniality prove that the nice girls finish first get ready for the la la re-experience 2.0 and here we have monica beverly hills now monica beverly hills this is a really interesting look and we'll talk about this in just a moment but she's all the way from season five uh one of the og back in the uh golden age of drag race and i believe she is known for being outspoken about her trans identity uh, on the show. And um, it was something that she carried with her outside of Drag Race. And I'm so glad that she gets to come back and really represent now because Drag Race has really, truly embraced the trans community in a way that I think was took too long to get there. So I'm so glad they finally have done that. Um, but she looks stunning in this Disco Ball Studio 54 look. This looks so good to me because it is one of those things, like I love interesting fashion and I love when form, function, and expression all come together. And I think that's definitely what's happening here. The big shoulder pads, Definitely 80s and 90s inspired there with the disco era of like those the the mirror reflective bodice into that belt with the chain. Also some, uh, mimicking that as well. I wouldn't be surprised if that's one piece that was built and then the fabric covered it uh, because that was that's definitely how I would have done it. Um, I love the wig. I think the wig looks really good. I, I can't wait to see what Monica brings this season and represents uh from for uh season five it says the official bio monica beverly hills made her story on season five when she shared her truth on the main stage now the trans trailblazer is back to serve face and fashion on her way to the drag race hall of fame night 9021 omg all right let's go here next and we have mrs kasha davis now the thing about mrs kasha davis is if you've kept up with her on social media she's been very busy since her time on drag race um and so I do believe they're going to tackle a lot of stuff dealing with her personal life and sobriety, which I think is going to be a big part of her story um, because she's been outspoken about that on social media. So I do think that's going to be something they will tackle uh, during the season or at least be some sort of a storyline. Uh, but I absolutely love this look on her. I have to say it's a little over designed for me uh, in the sense that I feel like between the bra area and the waist it's a little much for me but it still looks beautiful on her i love the leggings i think the shoes with all the extra fabric and and all the uh the, the boa there going on behind her the one sleeve with the shoulder out i think looks great that red hair looks absolutely fantastic on her and i do think she's gonna have a lot of fun looks i really enjoyed sort of that her aesthetic and silhouette that she had on her season of drag race so we'll see if she brings that back it says, uh, Mrs. Kasha Davis from season seven. There's always time for Mrs. Kasha Davis season seven. Uh, international celebrity housewife and drag story hostess here to turn a new page and demonstrate that reading and kindness are fundamental. Then we have Nasha Lopez. Now, Nasha Lopez is a Miss Continental winner, which if you watched uh, last season of Drag Race, you'll know that was part of Sasha Colby's story. But Nasha Lopez was that one of those original Miss Continental uh, girls to come on the Drag Race series and actually show that you know, you can be someone that can work well within Drag Race as well as outside in the biggest drag pageant in the world, which is Miss Continental Pageant. 
So she's coming back to do that again. You may also know her from her time with Roscoe's and doing the viewing parties and being the host of that, where they come in and talk about the after show for all of the shows. I'm curious if they're going to do that with this, considering that she's on the show. And I know they have NDAs and things they can't say. So I'm, I'm curious how that's going to work, if she's actually going to do it. Uh, but she looks stunning here. I love the wet hair look. Now, wet hair for me works in photograph, but not in movement, because you can tell that it's not really wet. So for me, I like it and when it's in a still picture. But when somebody is walking around with this wet hair look, it takes me out of that, the, the immersion for me. But I love it here. I love this red. It's such a rich, rich, rich uh, red on her with one leg out. If you've got a leg like that, you can show it off. I think that's absolutely fine uh, with the gloves. And I think this is great. I like the shape of that hip, giving us that, uh, that oversized uh, asymmetric look on her. And the makeup looks absolutely stunning. I would not expect anything less from her because she is a class actor. And what does it say to her down here uh, from season eight? Hola, the beauty is back. Chicago's hardest working pageant queen, Nasha Lopez, is ready for the biggest contest of them all. Gone too soon from season eight, this gorgeous glamazon and former Miss Continental will thrill drag fans all over again. So my final thoughts on all of this is we have a very good mix of seasons and different types of queens. And I know with the inclusion of Jimbo, um, we're dipping our toes once again into the international thing. They did that with Vivian during uh, All Stars 7 with the All Winners. So I'm looking forward to see to seeing what they're going to do here uh, with Drag Race All-Stars Season 8. So what I'll be doing is every week, as long as they have a runway, I will be talking about the looks and my brief thoughts on the episodes as they air on Paramount+. Plus. That will be one of the videos I'll be doing over here on this channel. So if you're a fan of that, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, also, I may be picking up Drag Race Hispania if I can get uh, high-quality photos of the runways to use to make videos with to talk about. Because I don't know if a lot of people are talking about the Drag Race Hispania looks. I'll check here on youtube i know some channels do some channels don't uh anyway thank you so much for tuning in and uh yeah that's pretty much it take care bye